I certainly have heard from friends who are family lawyers, and I can tell you they are very busy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you yeah. know, if you probably didn't love your spouse before or like them, you probably like them less now. Yeah. <laughs> I will <laughs> venture to say, um, you know, I will venture to say that, you know, it's certainly um, the last couple of years of maybe being trapped with someone yeah. isn't as favorable as you maybe once had envisioned. And, you know, if you owned a home together um, and you're going through a breakup, that might be challenging. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's probably why some people stay together, quite honestly. I think some people stay together fi for finance for finances. I think some people stay together for that old adage, like we're staying together for the kids. Yeah. I don't really know if that works or not. Like, I don't have kids, so I can't really speak to it. But, um, you know, sometimes people are, are better apart than they are together. Yeah. And it really does happen. And we see, we see them in the office. And, you know, it is a challenging time, and I'm cognizant of that. Um, but I mentioned earlier on the show that over half the files that I uh, that I do every day have a family component to it. Mm -hmm. And that may be a family component where there has been a separation or a divorce. Um, and maybe they're receiving some child support or spousal support, or maybe they're paying it. And that certainly does factor into the finances. Yeah. Uh, and it factors into the finances. Um, we can certainly use the income up to a time the child's 13 years old. After that, you're on your own because we think they're going to age out during the term. Um, but you know, a child that's 12 years old or younger, we can certainly use all of the child support. All right. So what advice do you give people who, who are in the, at the stage where they're, they, they, they hope that things are going to go well, they're in love, whatever mm -hmm. term you want to use, and they're buying a home, uh, together, they're entering this contract together, whether they're living together or married, it's for the, mm -hmm. according to the law, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. So do you, what advice do you give people at that stage? I think the first step is if you're married, then obviously the matrimonial property act applies. So I think that's really important to understand what the law is and get some legal advice. There's two different ways that you can take the title in Nova Scotia. And I assume in, you know, many provinces, it's very similar. Yeah. Uh, you can take it as joint tenants or tenants in common. And so that can really impact how things happen. If some, some one of you were to die. Yeah. Um, so if you are not married, uh, for example, and uh, you buy a home with your spouse and your joint tenants, your interest, if you were to die, would automatically go to the other person. If you were uh, not married and you bought the home and you do the title as tenants in common, whoever dies, their interest would then go to their estate. Ooh. So that could be challenging down wow, the road. That's or maybe very that's, important to or know. Or maybe that's, you know, it could be challenging down the road for some people. But I mean, it could also be easier down the road for some people. I guess it just depends. Why would on it be easier? I mean, it... well, if you are planning on giving uh, your financial interest maybe to your kids or I suppose, yeah. uh, your yeah, heir, um, you know, having it as tenants in common is probably the way. So to what's go. that mean? It's, so let's let's suggest that happens. Somebody dies and, mm -hmm. and you're in year three of a five year term. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for the person that's living when when their interest goes to the estate and? that person may not be able to pay for their qualify for to remortgage that house alone. Yeah, that might happen. And I'm sure it does. And maybe the estate needs to buy that other person out, or maybe uh, the executor and the, the remaining owner would agree to sell the home mm -hmm. and then split the interest on however the scheme was set up with the uh, tenants and in common. And these are for non-married people, right? This would be for non-married people. Right, right. If you're married and the property is your matrimonial home, then the Matrimonial Property Act applies. So regardless if a spouse is on title or not on title, uh, they have the same beneficial a, interest. Yeah, exactly. So let's say, Todd, for example, you um, are a single person. Mm -hmm. And uh, down the road, you decide you're going to get married. But you never update the deed of your home because you're like, ah, this was always my house. I'm going to keep the house. I don't want to change the mortgage. I'm in the middle of my term. Um, but your new spouse would then... Uh, become a beneficial owner as soon as she the marriage is done correct day one mm -hmm. wow wow that's very when they occupy it as a matrimonial home. okay can, can let's if it's not if it's a rental property that yeah. would be different okay so let's say that that you have the, that somebody's cognizant to use your word of these things mm -hmm. can they then through a lawyer create some type of uh, prenuptial agreement if yeah. that's the term that we use here in canada so um if you're uh, not married yeah. and you want to get such an agreement, it would be considered like a cohabitation agreement. Right. And it would really lay out what the financial terms would be if you were, if there were to be a separation. So then, you know, there's no um, gray areas, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to think about. And I know a lot of 
adults that maybe are on their second relationship and they will leverage that um, cohabitation agreement. I actually had borrowers in my office uh, a couple weeks ago and I won't give obviously their specific uh, situation. Um, but with one borrower, they actually brought it up and, and I, I brought it up. They're like, you know what? We've already had this conversation. And I'm like, you know what? This is so mature. They had at least one of the boars had been through a breakup mm -hmm. and the other one, it's like, this is the right thing to do. They both had money, Todd. Yeah. So it wasn't like one was having maybe more leverage over the other one, but they're like, you know what? We just want to lay it all out. So we know exactly where we're at. So there's no questions. And you know, the one thing I can say from being a mortgage broker, I think it's kind of like I'm a therapist in some ways. And when there's matrimonial breakdown, people get crazy about two things. One thing is kids, and the other thing is money. And <laughs> Not I, in that order necessarily. <laughs> may, may, honestly, it yeah. could be interchangeable. <laughs> uh, yeah. But those are the two kind of contentious issues. And getting your intentions down up front is really important. How often do people do that? What would um, you say? I'm going to say less than 10% of the time. Wow. Maybe less than 5% of the time. Wow. I yeah. don't have any, and these are not like no, real but stats. These are not real stats. So like, don't hold me to this. No, but I asked you what you think. I didn't say what are the statistics. Your thoughts are it's less than 10% of the time. I would be curious to know, and I don't know if there's any stats out there. So maybe we'll, we'll do some research. I'm looking at our uh, your crack team over there. Team. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll do some research. I'd be curious to know how many people do a cohabitation agreement. Maybe some people could send you some uh, feedback. Yeah. And you know, if there are any family lawyers that are listening to our show, mm -hmm. write me. I'd love to know this. The other thing I'm really curious about, how many borrowers do you think have a will? That's a good question. What do you think? Very low percentage. Really? How do you know that? I hear of the stories of family members that die and it's always going through probate and all of these issues. Yeah. And a lot of them will tie in testate, yeah. which means no will. Yeah. Um, you know, I think older people have wills because maybe people smarten up when they get older. Yeah. But I don't it know. It gets ugly though when it has to go to probate, right? Obviously. You and know, expensive too. We have about 13, 14,000 clients here and clients do die. <laughs> <laughs> There's the headline of the day. Clients do die. I Unless you use that as your sales moniker. I get the calls. And yeah. not, I get calls joking. because they're curious to know if they took the credit or insurance. So primarily, we offer credit or insurance with our mortgage product through Manulife. I'll just put it out there. And um, we offer life and disability insurance. And I'm not an insurance person, but I know it's a good insurance to have credit or at least to get over the gap to maybe get a whole life or a term policy or something that might be more of a longer term solution. All right. We're, uh, we're running out of time. How do people get a hold of you? Check us out online and we'll continue the conversation. Uh, you can check us out online at teamclinton.ca slash radio. Lots of great information there. And you know, if you have any questions, certainly give us a shout and um, lots of great blog posts as well. And of course uh, this, all this, uh, you mentioned all this will be on your website, all the links to all our, all our audio and video. Exactly. After this weekend, you know, obviously we're on Saturday and Sunday, we will get it online and it will be all on our social media. So check us out on the website and you can at least surf through to our social media and uh, check out any of our previous shows as well. Thanks Clinton. Always great. Thanks for having me Todd. Okay. Mortgage 101, your guide home ownership. Thanks everybody.